People say learning Rust is the hardest thing in the world, but that's not true. The hardest thing in the world is finding a Rust job position, unless you know where to look. In this video, I'm going to cover the different industries adopting Rust and how companies are incorporating Rust into their tech stacks. At the end, I'll also tell you how you can get a Rust position at one of these companies. Before we dive into who's using Rust, let's quickly touch on why companies are turning to Rust in the first place. Rust offers a unique combination of benefits hard to find anywhere else. First, it delivers peak performance while ensuring memory safety, eliminating an entire class of bugs. Second, Rust provides modern language features and powerful tooling like its built-in package manager, which is something traditional low-level languages like C and C++ lack. And third, Rust's robust type system contributes to highly maintainable code bases, saving time and resources in the long run. Now, obviously this doesn't mean that companies are going to rewrite every single piece of software in Rust, but these benefits do make Rust a great choice for software that needs to be robust, efficient, and future-proof. But which companies are actually taking advantage of these benefits? Industries and companies adopting Rust can be bucketed into three categories. Strong adoption includes industries where top tech companies are using Rust, especially for new projects. Growing adoption, which includes industries where Rust adoption is noticeably increasing. And experimental adoption, which includes industries in the early stages of exploring Rust's potential. These three buckets will give you a good idea of the current landscape and upcoming trends of Rust usage in the industry. When it comes to strong adoption, the first industry adopting Rust is cloud infrastructure and backend development. Major cloud providers like AWS are building cloud infrastructure in Rust, including Firecracker, a virtualization technology powering AWS Lambda and Fargate, and Bottle Rocket an open source Linux-based operating system for container hosting. The CTO of Azure, Mark Rosanovich, also famously tweeted that all new projects which need a non-garbage collected language should be written in Rust. He later confirmed during a conference talk that this is actually a policy at Azure. And it's important to note that all three major cloud providers, AWS, Google, and Microsoft, are platinum members of the Rust Foundation, which means they're actively contributing to its development. Cloudflare uses Rust extensively throughout its infrastructure to enhance performance, reliability, and safety. In fact, one of their engineers said it's now their go-to language for new projects. As someone who's worked extensively with JavaScript and TypeScript for full-stack development, I look forward to seeing Rust adoption in backend and cloud computing. And if you're a web developer like I was, specializing in backend work while learning Rust can be a great way to set yourself apart in the job market. Next, we have Web3. I know, I know, Web3 could be a controversial topic, but there's no denying that Rust has become a significant part of the ecosystem, and Rust developers are actually in high demand in that domain. Solana, a high-performance blockchain platform, is entirely built in Rust, and smart contracts in Solana are also built in Rust. Polkadot, an interoperable blockchain platform, also uses Rust for its core development. The team behind Polkadot, Parity Technologies, praised Rust for its memory safety and performance. Near and Ethereum are also examples of blockchain protocols that use Rust for smart contract development. Additionally, Rust is used for tooling in the Web3 space. Parity Technologies, the team behind Polkadot, develops blockchain infrastructure in Rust, including an Ethereum and Bitcoin client. Foundry is a blazingly fast, portable, and modular toolkit for Ethereum app development written in Rust. And the Lightning Development Kit, designed to help build applications on top of the Lightning Network for Bitcoin, is also written in Rust. If you're remotely interested in the Web3 space, I definitely recommend paying more attention to Web3 opportunities because Rust is often used in that domain. The next industry in the strong adoption category is systems and low-level programming. Rust started off as a research project at Mozilla. Since then, large portions of Firefox's engine Gecko have been rewritten in Rust. Chromium's security team has added support for third-party Rust libraries, and the Brave browser uses Rust for various components, including their ad blocker. Rust is also used in operating systems. The Linux kernel has slowly started to incorporate Rust, making it the only language other than C deemed worthy enough for the Linux kernel. I mean, Linus wouldn't even let C++ into the kernel. You. Microsoft is rewriting core Windows code in Rust, and Google has been using Rust in their mobile operating system, Android. In fact, in Android 13, roughly 21% of new native code was written in Rust. 
Given the memory safety issues that have plagued low-level software in the past, it's great to see some major tech companies adopting Rust as a memory safe alternative to C and C++, which will inevitably lead to more job opportunities in the future. Other low-level software like databases are also being built in Rust. The prime example is SurrealDB, a scalable, distributed, collaborative document database for the real-time web. Another example of low-level software are embedded systems and IoT devices. SmartThings, a company owned by Samsung, uses Rust to write memory-safe embedded applications for their SmartThings hub, powering home automation. Automotive companies are another example where Rust is being used for embedded software. Examples include Volvo Cars, where the lead architect said that Rust has huge potential to allow them to produce higher quality code at a lower cost. And I've also heard that Toyota, Mercedes, and other car manufacturers are using Rust as well. One great thing about the embedded space from my perspective is that the Rust team is explicitly supporting it by providing high quality crates and guides to help you get started. So if you're interested in embedded systems, there are many great resources available. Now, Rust's success in these areas is driving interest in other industries, which leads us to the growing adoption category. This is probably the most dynamic and most exciting category. The first industry seeing growing Rust adoption is cybersecurity. Microsoft is increasingly using Rust for security critical components across its products. The Tor project, which aims to provide online privacy, has created Arty, a new implementation of the Tor protocol written in Rust. One password, a password manager, uses Rust across its entire backend, including encryption, networking, database, and business logic. They're also powering all their desktop and mobile apps with a single shared Rust codebase. Now, obviously Rust isn't going to solve every cybersecurity problem there is, but it is being adopted for a reason, so this is something I'm keeping my eye on. Rust adoption is also growing in the finance and fintech industry. Two Sigma, one of the most prestigious hedge funds, has several public Rust projects on their GitHub. And I know that they've been hiring Rust developers as well. Kraken, a major cryptocurrency exchange, uses Rust extensively in its backend systems. Braintree, a global payments company owned by PayPal, uses Rust to speed up batch processing. Another exciting industry where we're seeing growing Rust adoption is machine learning and data science. XAI, the company behind Grok, built the entire infrastructure for Grok using Rust. Hugging Face, the largest machine learning online community, uses Rust for many components within the Hugging Face ecosystem for AI, including projects like Safe Tensors, Tokenizer, and Candle. Polars is a data frames library written in Rust. It's an alternative to Pandas and boasts to be 30 times more performant. Every time I talk to a developer in the data science field, they always mention Polars. Now, let's talk about the future of Rust by looking at industries where we're seeing emerging Rust adoption. First is aerospace and avionics. NASA has done some work to provide Rust language support for its core flight system. Cryptosat is building infrastructure for Web3 using satellites in space. Lechev.Space is building various aerospace-related projects, including a ground station service in Rust. There's even an aerospace community, which is an open-source community helping Rust gain adoption in the aerospace industry. And Earhart, a company developing simplified flight controls, is using Rust for all their onboard aircraft software. When I think of mission-critical software, aerospace and avionics are the first things that come to mind. Given the strict safety requirements and the high-stakes nature of the software, I think using Rust is a great choice and it will continue to be adopted. Another industry where we're seeing emerging Rust adoption is robotics. Scythe Robotics, a company developing commercial autonomous lawnmowers, has built their robot software platform in Rust and said that it paid huge dividends. Tangram Vision is another robotics company who's exploring using Rust. In terms of the ecosystem, we also have the ROS2 Rust library, which provides Rust bindings for robot operating system too, enabling developers to write ROS2 applications in Rust. Gaming is another industry where we see emerging Rust adoption. Embark Studios, a AAA game studio founded by former DICE and EA executives, is building their entire tech stack in Rust. And Ready at Dawn, another AAA game studio, now part of Meta's Oculus team, has also adopted Rust for game development. Now, Rust adoption is still in its early stages, but based on its usage so far, I think it's pretty fair to say that the language is here to stay. 
In fact, I know quite a few recruiters focusing on Rust positions full time, which is something I wouldn't have imagined a year or two ago. So now the question is, how can you land a Rust role? Given my experience working with developers who are both looking to transition to a Rust role and developers who already have a Rust role, there are three key things that I found are needed. The first thing is you got to know your craft, which means knowing the fundamentals of Rust, ownership, borrowing, error handling, project structure, etc. It also means knowing some of the more advanced features like async Rust, macros, and so on. In addition to that, you really want to know how to write Rust code in an idiomatic way, especially because you're likely going to be working on a code base where other developers are contributing. Rust is a pretty unique language, so this definitely takes time to learn. The second thing you need is to have the experience and the confidence to build production grade Rust software. Building a complete piece of software that you deploy somewhere and other people use is completely different than watching some tutorial videos or even doing some exercises in Rust. Having this experience has two benefits. First of all, you'll feel comfortable and confident in interviews. And even more importantly, you'll have something that you can put on your resume to get the interview in the first place. And the third thing you need is to have the right connections. This includes having a community of Rust enthusiasts and experts who can help you on your learning journey, having access to Rust recruiters who can advocate for you and help you land a Rust role, and knowing developers who already have Rust roles who can give you referrals. If you need help becoming a Rust developer or are just curious about the opportunities, make sure to get your free four-day training at letsgetrusty.com bootcamp. Hope you've enjoyed this video and remember to stay rusty.